Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 107. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for Chapter 11 or the PowerPoints for Chapter 11, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class section. Hey, this video we got to talk about how to calculate beta. Last video we talked about announcements that reveal unexpected information. That is the true risk of holding a stock, and that is what makes a stock price move. We also talked about, hey, unexpected information comes out. It could be of two different kinds. It could be systematic, which means GDP jumps unexpectedly. That's going to affect a lot of stocks. That's called systematic risk or market risk. And we talked about unsystematic risk. That's like when Boeing announces a new unexpected contract. Hey, that's not going to affect all the stocks in the market just that one stock or a few stocks. So ultimately, market risk or systematic risk is what is rewarded in the markets. And beta is the measure of that. So now, how do you calculate beta? In our textbook, they don't show you how to calculate it, but it's not too hard. So I'm going to uh, show you how to calculate it. It reveals the meaning a bit. Now, again, it's a measure for a particular stock. Uh, the systematic risk. Later, we'll see, in a later video, we'll see how to calculate for a beta. Um, all it involves is picking a proxy for the market, and I'm going to pick S&P weekly returns for the last four years. I'm shooting this in 2010, so this is going back, and we definitely have the credit crisis uh, recession stock returns in here too. And I'm going to I'm going to get all these numbers for each week, and I'm also going to get the for the same exact dates the stock uh, price for Whole Foods Market International. So I want to calculate Whole Foods Market International beta, the systematic risk for this stock. Now what we'll do is we'll plot it. De uh, returns, and we'll actually calculate the returns for the S and P, and then the returns for Whole Food Markets, not the actual. Uh, stock value, but the returns. And when we plot them, you, we can clearly see that, and this is a scatter diagram. A scatter diagram plots the relationship between two variables. And we'll be able to see whether what happens as this one moves, what does this one do? Well, we can see from this finished product here, we're going to do this in this video, you can see that it looks like there's a direct relationship uh, here. So as the market moves up, the Whole Foods market tends to move up also. And as the market goes down, Whole Foods markets tends to go down. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, plot this, and then we'll do with Excel. Makes it so simple. Uh, least squared uh, linear regression to try and get at the slope of this line. And there it is, 1.1601. And that'll tell us for every one unit of market change, it looks like this will go up by 1.106. So it's a little bit more than the market. That means it has a little bit more systematic risk than the market. Ah, but when it goes down by one, when we move minus one unit here, this will go down by minus 1.1061. All right, let's go over to Excel. And all I did is I went to Yahoo. And I calculate, I wanted the uh, weekly data for the S&P and Whole Foods market. Now I got the close adjusted. Close adjusted. This adjusted will account for uh, stock splits and dividends. Now all we need to do before we plot it and then calculate the slope of the line for our beta is to calculate the returns. Well, here we have uh, weekly data. So for the S&P, I'm simply going to say, hey, the end value minus our begin. I'm sorry, divided by our begin minus 1. That'll give us our weekly return. Notice these are relative cell references. So when I copy it over here, it'll move. And when I copy it down, it'll work just fine. So I'm going to copy it over. And then I'm going to double click this fill handle and send it all the way down. Now we need to highlight these two labels up here. Control, Shift, and Down arrow to highlight all the way down. Now let's go to Insert, Scatter. Ah, there's our scatter diagram. Show us the relationship between two numbers. Now, this is way down at row 150, so I'm going to point, click on the edge and Control X to cut. Control Home key to jump to the top. Control V to paste. All right, so let's look at this chart. Uh, 
right off the bat, anytime you do X, Y, scatter, you got to put labels to let people know what the heck's going on here. I'm going to click there and hit the delete key. What variable is here and what variable is here? I'm going to come up to the chart tools context sensitive ribbon, layout. I'm going to go over to axis titles. How about horizontal first? Title below. Now, actually, we need to move this. I want to get to, I've already typed out some titles here. Now, when you click on this and you see the outline box, you can then immediately come up to the formula bar, click, type equals, and then click on our label. This is the S&P Weekly Returns, enter. So we have our label right there. Let's do the same thing, layout, axis, vertical, rotated. It's highlighted, click in the formula bar, equal, click, Enter. And I'm going to highlight this and come up here and type beta for Whole Foods Market International. So you can see for labels, you can either type or link them. Enter. All right, now we can see the relationship looks direct as, this one, as the market goes up. Whole Foods Market tends to go up and if it goes down, it tends to go down, but I want a line, and it's really easy in Excel. You just click on the lines and right click, add trend line. There's also a layout add trend line right here. I'm going to say linear. I definitely want to display the equation and show R squared. R squared just tells you what influence the X variable has on the Y, not causation, just the influence. All right, and then I have this. I'm going to click on the edge, and then when I see my uh, move cursor, four away pointing black arrows, and I click and drag, and there it is. There's our slope. That's our measure of beta. Now let's see how to do it in the cells with the formula, because a lot of times you want to use this in calculations. Drag this over here, and we're going to see how to do it two ways. I like the slope way. Uh, linear regression. We want to figure out the m from our y equals mx plus b. Uh, lots of other variations on that, but it's just the slope. And guess what? They named the function smartly. Slope. Not, uh, there we go. Slope. Now it's asking for known y's and known x's. So our y's are our whole foods markets. Remember, because we're our, this is our predicted variable. This is the predictor variable. So as the predictor variable moves, what does the predicted variable do? So I'm going to take my y's first, control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. That's just to jump back up. We don't, we're not going to copy it anywhere. So we don't need to lock it. Comma, known x's, control shift down arrow, F4 to jump it back up. And close parentheses. So there we have it. That's the amount of our systematic risk based on weekly data from the past four years. However, that's one way to do it. There's another way to do this. And this isn't a statistics class where we learn what how to calculate correlation and what it means, but it is kind of a cool measure, correlation. And standard deviation, we already uh, calc learned how to calculate in this class. But co it's correlation times standard deviation of Whole Foods Market divided by standard deviation of the market. Now, correlation just tells us the strength and the direction of um, a data set, the relationship between two data sets. If it, it's always between negative 1 and 1. If it's a positive number, it means it has a direct relationship. If it's a negative uh, number, it has an indirect relationship. Indirect just means as this one increases, the other predicted variable decreases. Uh, the closer they all are to the line, the closer they get to a 1. All right, now, so correlation will tell us the strength and direction. But notice this formula, correlation, strength, and direction times standard deviation of the asset divided by standard deviation of the market. Well, what does this part do right here? When you take standard deviation of the asset divided by standard deviation of the market, you get per one unit of standard deviation, which is the total risk of the market, What's your standard deviation or total risk for Whole Foods, right? So it's kind of clever. Correlation, strength, and direction times the amount of total risk per unit of market risk. All right, uh, let's see how to calculate this. Luckily, there's a Corel function. Corel, and we can uh, 
array one and two, so we'll get our Ys, control shift down arrow F4, comma, and then our Xs, control shift down arrow F4, times, and we'll do standard deviation. Now this is a sample, so we use STDEV. Uh, I'm using 2010, so that these new functions here, but the one we want down here, these little symbols mean compatibility. Just means you're allowed to use the old functions. So I'm going to use that. Oh, standard deviation of Whole Foods Market. So I'm going to click there, Control Shift Down Arrow F4, divided by, because we want total risk uh, per unit of the market risk. So I'm going to do another STDEV. And this one will be of our uh, market, which is the SP. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. And that ought to do it get the same answer both ways. Both of these are methods of calculating the amount of systematic risk or our beta for a particular stock. And uh, we also have our chart which shows us visually, visually um, where all the data points uh, lie and we can also add our trend line and show our equation. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.